Okay, so I'll be talking about uh, template tag components today. So I think we already saw a lot of coverage, um, like in the keynote talk by Yehuda, as well as the, as the talk by Ed. Um, today I will be going a bit deeper into how you can actually use it already, uh, so a bit more of the, the technical, practical stuff. Uh, first up, uh, a word about myself. Uh, so my name is Inyas, and I work at OT Insights. Um, we're a company that builds BI solutions for the hospitality industry. Uh, and we have over 75,000 hotels worldwide uh, using our application basically to run their hotel. So there's actually quite a decent chance if you're staying in Portland in a hotel, they're using an Amber app uh, to run their business. Uh, so that's probably nice to know. Um, so I, yeah, give it up. Yeah. All right. So I came all the way from Belgium. Um, where I work at OT Insights um, as a, yeah, in the, the, the platform team within the, the front end uh, team at OT Insights. And part of my job is to also make sure that everybody um, in the, the front end team in the company um, is really as efficient as possible, that the develop, developer experience is as nice as possible, um, which is also what got me really excited about template tag components. Um, so jumping in. Um, so what if I told you there's actually a new way to write Ember components today? And for you, obvi obviously, this doesn't come as a surprise anymore. We saw a lot of coverage in the, in the talks before. Um, but I think it's also good to recognize that a lot of folks um, don't read RFCs or perhaps are not on the Discord channel. Um, so I think it's also yeah, a good thing to, to be mindful of that. Um, so yeah, let's first take a step back and look at Ember's next edition, which is Polaris. Uh, so Polaris is really all about, um, yeah, five things mainly, um, and one of them is template tag components. Um, so I think about every pillar of Polaris, there will be a nice talk about it at EmberConf. Um, I will be going more specifically in uh, template tag components. Um, so, oh, by the way, uh, like this is the Octane uh, picture of, of uh, Ember. Uh, I couldn't find one for Polaris, so if we could make one for Polaris, I think that would be really great to have. Yeah, so if you had a look at the release post of Ember 5.0, um, like it's, it went through all the deprecations of Ember, as well as new features, uh, but it also contained a section about things that are new about Ember. Uh, and one section in particular uh, was about template tag components, and there it basically said, okay, you can start using it today, we ship support for it, um, so um, you can basically start using it. Uh, especially the last sentence was really interesting to me, uh, which mentions that's during the 5.x series, it will become the default um, way, or is expected to become the default way to write components within Ember. Um, so that ultimately raises the question, should you start using template tag components today? Um, I think before we can actually answer this question, uh, we need a bit more context about what they actually are, how you can use them, and also why are they here? Um, so We'll get back to this question at the end of the presentation. So let's start off with why. Why do we need the new component formats? Because yeah, ever since Octane, we've been writing uh, Glimmer components, and they do the job really well. So why should we change things up? Um, so template tag components are really all about um, template imports. And currently, if you write um, yeah, components in uh, Glimmer, if you use, for example, a helper, um, Ember will know based on, like, if it's a, a helper, it will check in the helper directory of your application to find a match with that file name um, for that helper. Um, this worked nicely, but also has a couple of issues. Um, so, for example, um, naming issues. Um, if you have, let's say, an add-on that, that ships a helper with a certain name, but you also have one in your own application with the same name, yeah, it will collide. And the one from your application will overwrite the one from the add-on, uh, which is not good. Uh, it's also really hard to um, have locally scoped uh, codes, and this is the thing that Yuda also uh, quickly mentioned in the keynotes. It's like if you have, for example, uh, modifiers, they live in a totally different file, uh, somewhere completely uh, unrelated to your components, while in practice it is actually very much related to your component codes. Um, so that's also an issue. Um, also, wider ecosystem tooling, um, say for example, um, CSS solutions like um, CSS modules or styled components, 
Um, these libraries often expect your templates to have the context of JavaScript, which currently is not the case uh, with Glimmer templates. Um, and then finally, like the, the testing setup is also currently completely different from writing actual components codes, uh, which is, uh, at least to me, was really confusing in the beginning of Ember that you had like this HBS helper in your tests, but it wasn't available in regular components. So the goal of template imports is really to rework this to all work based on references. And besides like solving all the um, issues mentioned above, it also unlocks a couple of new things um, like code splitting, because now we know if we do it based on reference where everything is coming from, um, as well as like we're not um, bound by the file structure of Ember anymore. Well, as mentioned before as well, like there will still be um, yeah, conventions from Ember. Uh, we're not tied into that system um, anymore. But this raises the question as well, how should we do template imports? Uh, because ultimately uh, we use handlebars for writing templates, uh, but that doesn't have syntax to actually do templates. Um, so to illustrate this, um, I've written a small component, uh, copy to clipboard it's called, and it basically allows you to pass um, text to it, and if you click on the button, it will set it to your clipboard. Um, so usage of the components could look something like this. Um, the actual components, how you could write it today, um, like the template could look like this. Uh, so you have a button where you register an on-click listener. Um, based on the state, if you have copied or not, it will show a different text. Uh, and next to it will also show like this clipboard icon. Um, so I can uh, do a live demo of this button and it should hopefully work. So if I click on this, it's now been copied to my clipboard. Um, so the actual backing class um, currently could look like this. So we have like a track property to keep track of the states as well as an, an action to actually um, do the, the copying. Uh, but if you look at the templates, um, like there's a couple of things you can wonder, like the icon components that is being used, um, is this from your own application or from an add-on? Like there's really no way to tell based on, on just this code on the slide. Um, also the on modifier, um, at least you hope it's the one from Ember modifier. Um, but ultimately if somebody, yeah, one of your colleagues wants to have a joke with you. Maybe he, he made like a custom on modifier and, and tricked you into using that one. There, there's really no way to tell based on just this code example. Um, so how can we take this code um, and actually add imports to it um, to have this reference-based resolving? Um, so first option could be using front matter, uh, which is a system that is often used also in markdown files to add metadata to existing files. Um, so here you could, for example, add just imports to it, um, which is a very naive, naive approach, also the smallest delta over the current approach, uh, but it does come with some issues like how does it work together with the tooling that Amber has, um, as well as external tooling like code editors, uh, etc. cetera. Um, another approach we could take is like the, the single file component structure from Vue or Svelte um, that you're maybe familiar with. Uh, where you have like these imports in a script tag and then your template separately. Uh, but here, yeah, you somehow have to know that your imports in the script tag is then also available in your template tag. So the semantics there are a bit strange perhaps. Um, yeah, so there's different ways to do it. Uh, a third option could be, uh, why don't we take the helper from the tests in Ember and use that to like embed a, a template within a component. Um, this could also work, uh, but finally, um, ultimately, what we landed up is uh, using the template tag um, and use it that way to embed templates within a component. Um, so I quickly went over all these options uh, because really there's a lot to it and there's a lot of trade-offs to be made. Um, ultimately, all four of them solve the issue, like we can have imports and templates. There's just different trade-offs that have to be made between semantics, uh, between learning, um, tooling, and testing. Um, so if you're really interested in like the whole backstory of this and why ultimately we got to this point of template text, um, I definitely recommend you to check out the blog post by Chris Kreitschow, uh, so who wrote a lot of um, all of the backstory of 
why this is a good approach. Um, so ever since uh, the RFC mentioned over there, it's also the one that has been accepted to yeah, officially use within Amber. So that brings us to the semantics of template tag components. Um, and this is really just a difficult word to like, describe how you can use them today, um, how you program with template tag components, as well as like, it will be about building this mental model um, of how you can use them. So the first thing that comes to mind is like comparing them to the current uh, code format that we have. And there it's really different in three uh, ways uh, that are at least obvious uh, when you first start using them. Um, so the first thing is that we have a new file extension. Um, so based on if you're using TypeScript or JavaScript is GGS or GTS, uh, which is just uh, short for Glimmer JavaScript or TypeScript. Uh, yeah, and then you also have um, imports that you will have to add. So this is for components, for helpers, and for modifiers. Uh, and then lastly, you would also have to wrap your actual template code within this new template tag. Uh, so let's look at, look at some examples of this, and starting with a, a very basic one, uh, which is a, a template only component. Um, like this greeting component, it just says, hey, with a waving icon next to it, uh, today, it would look something like this. Um, if we would look at the template tag solution, um, so we would know to wrap it in a template tag and then also add the import um, for the icon components. And in this case, you know, okay, it actually comes from my own example app in this case and not from an external add-on. If we look back at the class-based example, this is the uh, copy to clipboard components. Um, so I shown this code before. Um, in template tag components, you would also add the imports and then you can embed your templates within your backing class. And because you embed it in the backing class, it's automatically linked to this backing class uh, so it knows what the context of this component is. But there's more. So this is how you would compare them to the way, current way of working with Ember components. But actually, there's more things to it that it unlocks um, that you can also start using in the future. So one first thing to notice is that you have direct, Im direct access to imported values. Um, and a good example of this could be uh, feature flags. Um, so I know a lot of you probably out there um, use feature flags to like toggle things in your application based on the context of the user. Um, so if you would have a feature flag in like a, a constant file just a constant string. Uh, today, if you want to use that in your template, um, yeah, you would use it um, via a helper, uh, but to actually have access to this constant value declared somewhere in a constant file, you would have to like import it in your backing class and then like restate uh, it in your, in your backing class to actually have access to it. So it's a bit annoying, like you can't actually use template tag, um, you can't actually use um, template only components for this. Um, yeah, it's, it's not ideal. So if we take a look then at the template tag version, um, here you can just use a, a template only components. Um, and in this case, we just also import the value and you can just literally access it from your uh, template tag components. Um, also notice that in this case, we have added the imports um, from the, uh, for the, uh, helper as well, um, so don't forget about those imports. A second um, new thing uh, or a different thing with template tag components is that you can also declare um, constants, helpers, and modifiers locally. Uh, so in this case, it's just a very simple component that uh, will render the square of two equals four. And uh, you see like the, the constants of two has been declared locally within the components as well as like a, a helper function um, so ever since Ember 4.5, we can actually use regular functions as helpers. Um, so you can just write it this way um, and it'll work. Um, I think it's really nice, um, especially for modifiers. Uh, so at least in, in my code base that I work in, like there's a lot of render modifiers still. And we also had this issue like um, if you would want to have custom modifiers, yeah, suddenly your logic that, that is quite closely coupled to your component suddenly like lifts off in a, in a file 
somewhere totally different. Um, so this is a great thing that uh, template tag components unlock uh, to be able to yeah, put those uh, things together. Um, also a big change is that you can now also, besides uh, constants, helpers, and modifiers, you can also declare multiple components in a single file. Because ultimately, um, a GGS file is just a JavaScript module. Um, so you can declare multiple components, um, use them within the same components. And I think this is a really powerful way um, because if you look at like existing um, codes, like at least in our code base, like components, they always grow. And people keep on adding new stuff to it. Um, and it's really a burden to like split up codes in multiple, in multiple files because um, yeah, it, it has this extra burden for uh, reviewers to also yeah, make sure that, that you keep track of where things moved. Um, and in essence, uh, splitting up components into multiple parts is also like how you would split up a function in a JavaScript file um, if it's getting too large. Uh, so I think this is especially useful if you have, for example, a list component, like in this case, um, that has a list item component that's only used within that list component. Um, so in that case, yeah, you can just separate that to a separate component and have it being more maintainable in this way. And that brings us to testing. Um, so I quickly uh, touched upon this already. Um, currently, you have this HBS helper in, in tests uh, that you use to render yeah, your, your template, basically. Um, and if we look at the um, template tag version of this, you can just actually use a template tag, uh, which is super powerful because there's just one story to writing components. Uh, there's no different thing you have to learn about writing uh, tests. Uh, it's just the same as you would expect. Um, a different thing to notice is that also here in tests, you have to do your imports um, because it just works the same way. Um, as well as um, this access that you have to um, yeah, local scope, basically. You can also directly use, um, for example, this text property. You no longer have to bind it to the backing uh, context of this uh, test, which is super, super powerful as well. All right, and that brings me to styling. So I know at least uh, one of you has been wondering if we have like a, a template tag uh, is there also something like a style tag? And I'll quickly move on already. So template tag, in essence, is um, not opinionated about styling. So we've seen in, in Yehuda's talk, um, he, he showcased like a, a way to already use um, style tags uh, within template tags, but ultimately, like the format itself of template tag components is not opinionated, and you can just use whatever you're already using it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that Amber can't work on uh, things that are even more nicely integrated uh, within Amber itself. Um, so I think there's a couple of interesting add-on developments going on uh, side by side. Um, so Glimmerscope TSS is the one that um, Yehuda also showed and, uh, and Ads has been working on. Uh, so this allows you to embed a style tag within a template tag. And by doing that, it will be locally scoped to just that component. Um, but also, like for CSS modules, if you're using that, there's add-ons for that, as well as just separate CSS files uh, that also just still works with template tag components. So that brings us to uh, the topic of how you can actually use this today. Um, so yes, you can actually already use it today. But what does it look like in code? Um, so the first thing uh, you can look at is um, the Ember uh, template imports uh, add-on, uh, which is um, an add-on that adds the build tooling to your application to convert this new file format into standard JavaScript, basically. Uh, so this allows you to uh, define those new file formats. Um, and if you look at the compatibility, like it actually goes all the way back to Ember 3. Uh, so I think it's a very powerful uh, thing that's Really, a lot of applications have access to this. Um, so that's really exciting to see. Um, also, a, a big benefit of this is that you can adopt it incrementally. Uh, so if you have an older, larger application, you can just start adding new template tag components within that application, uh, and it will just work side by side 
with existing components. Um, yeah, one thing to note, to note though is that like the underlying implementation of this library is probably not going to be the final option of how it will eventually uh, be in Polaris uh, because really the history of this add-on is that it was used as a, a way to um, research on what the best approach was. So if you remember from the beginning of the talk, like we had these four different ways to uh, do imports. Uh, this was really like a way to implement multiple versions of that and uh, yeah, basically see based on, on, uh, on evidence of what it had actually look like uh, and what works well. Um, so there's also the, the content text pack, which is like a, a more generic way of embedding um, languages within a file format. Um, so currently we have like a template that you can embed, uh, but why don't we enable that for different uh, languages, like for example GraphQL, if you want to embed that in a language, uh, you could also do that. Um, and in a, in a sense, it's also framework agnostic, uh, similar to how GSX is not tied to React. It, it's like the, the biggest user of React, of GSX, uh, but there's also other frameworks that can make use of this specification, uh, similar to like the, the idea of, of content tag. Um, so the content tags package uh, specifically is uh, the preprocessor to rewrite this uh, to valid JSON, uh, to valid JavaScript, um, and this is built on top of Rust uh, using Speedy Web Compiler. Uh, so that's really nice to see that Ember is now yeah, also making uh, the jump and being able to use like this modern tooling within, uh, within Ember. Um, but I think the, the most important takeaway of this slide is that it actually doesn't matter for you as an end user. Uh, the, the syntax of template tag components, that's done, that's finished, and that's, that's fixed as well. So even if you start writing template tag components already today, um, like there, there will be no way or, or no reason to, to ever rewrite um, that, that syntax of that file because it's just fixed already, even if there's like a layer underneath that will change. Um, so what you do have to do um, today to get the full integration of template tags uh, is um, for linting, uh, making sure that you upgrade to at least uh, the version of these plugins mentioned on, on the screen. Uh, so we have uh, support for ESLint as well as for uh, template lint um, from starting from these versions. Um, also Prettier has support. Uh, for this one, you do have to install like a separate plugin though. Um, so once you install that one, uh, make sure to configure it in your Prettier RC file. Uh, and also enable it to run on these new file extensions. Um, depending on your code editor of, of preference, you might also have to configure some other things if you use like a, a prettier plugin within VS Code um, because yeah, it's really a new language feature. Uh, you also have to enable it for that language um, yeah, that the prettier plugin uh, runs as well. So what about um, type checking in uh, in, uh, in Ember, so for this you can use Glint uh, for end-to-end -end type checking throughout your templates. Um, and this also actually already supports uh, template type components. Um, so you also, in this case, have to install a separate plugin, uh, make sure you register it in the TS config, and also import it in your types somewhere. Uh, so this can be your global uh, type registry. All right, yeah, I know what you're thinking. This, this has been a lot of configuration. Um, and really, this is what, like, the experience you get today. Uh, but keep in mind that eventually when Amber Polaris is like a uh, feature complete thing, uh, this will all just co come out of the box. You wouldn't have to think about how do I start writing template tag components. It will just work. And I think that's important to keep in mind. Um, so what about like local development? Uh, because as I've said, it's a, it's a new language, a new file extension. Um, your editor doesn't handle it out of the box. Um, so for Visual, Visual Studio Code, there's actually two plugins available. Um, so the first one, VS Code Glimmer, uh, it's, the, it's the one that's linked in like the repository of uh, template tag components. And it's just a very basic setup to get um, yeah, syntax highlighting, basically. Uh, but me personally, uh, I'm definitely uh, a big fan of the second one uh, because it adds even more uh, features uh, because, yeah, there's a lot of things uh, you can do in Glimmer, in Glimmer templates and this uh, plugin also really 
highlights it, it very well. Um, yeah, so richer syntax highlighting. You have things like automatically closing tags when you start uh, writing a tag. Uh, and it's also by the same author as like the Ember language server, so it just works well together. If you're using any other editor, um, there's also quite a high chance you will actually already have support. Uh, so I know for sure uh, NeoVim is also supported. Uh, but really, like, what all it takes is that you have uh, grammar definitions um, that are available. And a lot of um, yeah, other IDEs also allow you to register this grammar for this new language. And that way, you can also already get syntax highlighting. Um, so about the thing about GitHub and GitLab is that we don't yet have syntax highlighting, which is a bit of a bummer, uh, but to actually get syntax highlighting on GitHub, uh, they require 2,000 files in total um, spread across multiple users and multiple repositories. Uh, so last I checked, we were actually at 1,100. So I would also like to call upon everybody, try out template tag components and commit it to GitHub, and then I'm sure we'll get to the 2,000 in, uh, in no time. Um, there's, there's actually a, a way to like also already start using with it today with some syntax highlighting, uh, which is a, a way uh, by uh, setting Git attributes, and both GitHub and GitLab support this. Uh, so via these configurations shown on the slides, uh, you, you actually already get syntax highlighting as if it was JavaScript, which is not great, but at least, yeah, it's, it's something. So if you want to have syntax highlighting on the web, um, so for this, there's uh, highlight.js as well as Shiki you can use. Uh, so fun story here is that for my slides, I wanted to use uh, SlideF. And for those of you that don't know it, it's like a, a, a framework where you can use um, Markdown to write uh, slides. And it, it also really um, comes in handy because it allows you to write codes within your slides, so you don't have to take like screenshots of your codes, copy paste it into your slide deck, and every time you have to make a change, copy it over again. Um, the problem, however, was um, this, um, yeah, this uh, library didn't support template tag uh, highlighting yet, which is kind of a problem if your talk is about template tag components. Uh, so I ended up just looking uh, what they use, and it turned out they use Cheeky. Uh, so I just had a look myself and, yeah, start working on that. And actually, a couple of weeks ago, they accepted this pull request. Uh, so now you can also use uh, the syntax highlighting in Shiki, um, which is used in SlideF, but also, for example, in uh, VitePress, uh, which you might know to write, like, documentation uh, on add-ons, for example. I also want to give a shout-out to uh, the tutorial uh, on Glim down, uh, which is made by Nullvox Populi, uh, which is a really nice way to already try template tag components just from your browser. Uh, it takes you through like this whole tutorial on, on how to write template tag components, and yeah, it's, it's really powerful to build up this mental model um, on how it compares to uh, template tag, or to classic components today, basically. So definitely check that one out. And finally, let's take a look ahead. Um, so everything I've shown before is already possible today. It's already out there. Uh, but there are still a couple of things that are not yet available. And the first um, thing to mention is that you can't use template tag components within routes. Because historically, in Ember, routes are not the same thing as components. Um, so it also doesn't work yet. Uh, so for this, there has been like an RFC on set route components, uh, but that one it's still, it's still not merged yet. Uh, there's like a polyfill available if you want to try it out. So, and theoretically, you can already have an app that is fully on template tag components. But ultimately, you just want to wait for the Polaris router because that's really the, one of the, the main pillars there is that you can use template tag components in your routes. Also, an, uh, an interesting one is code mods. Uh, I think historically, Ember has always been good at um, yeah, keeping the whole community together and making the transitioning as smooth as possible. Um, so uh, Chris Kreitschow, who has been doing a lot of work on template tag components, mentioned that LinkedIn has been working on a, a code mod for this. Um, so I think it's a very ambitious goal. I'm really curious to see what they're up to. Uh, but 
even if LinkedIn doesn't do it, I'm, I'm sure like there will be a lot of uh, community um, attention for it. So I think this is definitely uh, one thing that's going to happen eventually. And then finally, that brings me to my wish list. Uh, so a couple of things I would really like to see uh, within the template tag experience today is automatic imports in your editor, uh, because yeah, you have to do a lot of imports. Um, also, for example, for like the built-in helpers, and yeah, always you have to look at, okay, what is the import again? Um, it's just a bit annoying, so it would be really nice if it could just be auto-completed within your uh, editor. Um, blueprints, blueprints is also a really interesting one. Uh, so for those that use uh, Ember CLI to generate like a new components, um, today it's not possible to generate like a template tag components, uh, so it, I would really like to see that happening as well. Uh, and then finally, um, documentation. Uh, this will be where it all comes together. Um, so currently there is really no way to put it uh, because it like lives in a, a separate repository, uh, but eventually like the, the, the whole template tag components will be on the, the main um, yeah, Amber doc site. All right, let's wrap it up. So the state of template tag components today. Um, so it's officially the next generation component format in Ember. Uh, it's already usable today. Um, you can adopt it incrementally, so um, using old components in the new file formats, but also the new components in old formats. Um, it unlocks code splitting because we have these references, um, so the, the build tooling can better understand um, your codes. Um, it also has this local scope access, as we saw for like local helpers, local modifiers, even local components. Uh, and finally, it also offers a streamlined, streamlined testing experience, uh, which is also a big uh, improvement, in my opinion. So this brings us back to the question, should you start using template tag components today? And here, I think if the, ans the answer is if you don't mind like bumping into some rough ed edges here and there, um, I think it's definitely worth to already uh, look into it uh, because of all the benefits I mentioned before. It's just a really improved experience to, to like how we write components uh, before template tag components. Um, if you're not that uh, risk, uh, or if you're not risk, risk aware, um, if you want to hold off for a bit uh, until it's like in the recommended phase, uh, that's totally fine as well, uh, because that will eventually happen. Uh, but at least I hope after my talk today you have a better context of where these template tag components are coming from and uh, what they allow you to do. Uh, personally, um, for new projects, my go-to like setup is template tag components with TypeScript and Glint, and I think that's super productive. And then the only thing that rests me to say is, thank you for listening. <laughs>